G'day, my name's Dave Martin. We farm here in Wairau. Uh, we've got about 2,200 hectares, 2,000 hectares of hill country, and we farm sheep and beef on our hill country, and we're cash, summer cash cropping and winter cattle grazing and lamb grazing here through the winter. So cyclone hail came probably three weeks ago, and we were lu really lucky. We just got a bit of rain, sort of 50 odd mils. It was no problem for us. And then last week, cyclone Gabriel turned up, and ironically, we only got 70 mils here on this farm, but in the back country, they got anywhere from 300 to 500, and it's quite a big river catchment. It's probably the second or third biggest in New Zealand, and we got water everywhere. So there was no respite. The two rivers join a kilometre above this property and the water rose within a few hours. Bowl has always been the benchmark for the Warrell Gisborne district back in 1988. Everyone talks about comparing floods to bowler. Well, this one beat bowler by two metres in vertical height. So, yeah, a fair bit more damage to this farm and surrounding backcountry farms and in downstream through Warrell where it cut straight through the showgrounds and, and took a detour down through the North Clyde side of Warrell down to Byafco and back into the river again. So it's pretty um, pretty hard flood for, for Warrell at, at, uh, at a hard time of the year, especially with us with a lot of crops that are a couple of weeks off harvest. Where we're standing now, the water was clean, clean over the top of all these crops, well over our heads here. So we're uh, unsure as to what we'll be able to harvest, if anything. We weren't expecting uh, a flood of this proportion, let alone ever thinking that we could have a flood bigger than Bowler. So, and it was really fast. It rose really, really quickly within a matter of probably 45 minutes. We beat March a storm last year, and we were, yeah, probably a good two and a bit metres better than that storm. My name's Mark Mitchell. Uh, we farm up the Esk Valley. We've been here for five generations. Uh, we're a sheep, beef and deer farm uh, with a mixture of cropping flats down the bottom here and uh, hill country up the top. So we, we got warnings that we were going to get a pretty big rain event here, which was good. So we managed to move a lot of stock from the lowland up, but we never ever thought it would be as big as it was. We got 584 mils on our farm, of which 200 and, well more than 240 mils fell within a six hour period. Uh, rain intensity of more than 50 mils an hour and up the valley further they, they got over 700 mils in the 24 hour period so it was a huge quantity of, of rain and unfortunately uh, Hawke's Bay was well the whole east coast was already very very wet uh, the wettest summer since records began so uh, we've had a lot of slips and those slips have resulted in a huge amount of soil uh, predominantly silt coming down the valley so down the bottom here, uh, we've lost about 20 hectares of crops uh, that are now completely buried in, in silt. Uh, we've lost roughly five and a half kilometres of fencing. Uh, it's either buried or completely gone. We've lost our access up to our house, unfortunately. Uh, so we, we've got a four by four track to get out now, but uh, it's completely buried in, in probably a metre and a half of silt, uh, quite a big area too, and it's uh, diverted a stream through it, so it's still really wet, so we, we can't even get access to our house. So they've got a 30 tonne digger in there to try and dig a track, but it's all slop, so um, they've failed, failed at that unfortunately, so it's going to be a waiting game for that. Uh, our main loadout um, yards at the bottom there are completely buried, the tops are just sitting out of the silt as well, so we've lost any ability to get stock in or out of the property uh, for the short term anyway. Uh, roading and infrastructure here, a lot of the bridges are damaged, uh, so getting in any sort of heavy machinery has been challenging. Um, we've got a number of friends down the valley who have lost everything, um, including our neighbours here who had to swim for their lives at quarter past five in the morning. Um, they've lost their entire house, their contents, everything. And um, I know of at least another five friends down the valley who have lost the same. It's a storm or event like we've never seen before. We had the 1938 flood and they have a memorial down the valley there for it and it looks to be at least two metres above that memorial height as well. So um, it's a really, really significant event. I'm Daniel Absalom. I um, am fifth generation here on this um, farm at Risington. We run a large scale uh, seed stock uh, farm here, um, breeding bulls for, for around the countryside, around New Zealand. 
We're still sort of very much in the early stages of doing it. I think in a, um, in a, we've been offered a lot of, you know, farmer support from other farmers. None of the bodies have contacted us, us at all, ironically. Um, so we have really much been on our own. But I think in another week's time, you know, we're going to need, you know, people on shovels and things to, to help. But we're just sort of focused on getting families, um, you know, safe and happy in, in their houses with power and food and water and fuel. Those are the main things at the moment. You know, we've got a core group of people that are getting on and, and, and getting it done at the moment, so we sort of haven't had a chance to, to brief a few of the, all, the, all the crew that have been on for nine days. You know, any support is, is welcome, financial support. You know, there's people been working here around the clock um, and obviously they've got, haven't got day jobs um, that are paying them um, while they're doing this work. So. Um, you know, it's amazing, you know, no one's asking to be paid or anything, but um, they're turning up every day and, and slogging their guts out, which is, which is great and it helps and it brings everyone together. So the Wairua River comes down where the poplar trees are over there and you don't see it um, all year. So when you get up in the morning and you can see it and hear it, you know it's not a good day. Uh, so the river builds up right through here and the, the river's a horseshoe around us. So she just comes straight through. When she gets full enough, it just comes straight through the guts here. Cyclone Bowler came through here in 1988 and uh, this is a new cow shed here that we've converted. But uh, the old one, it went into the pit. So it just came up a little bit. This one's half a metre higher than the old cow shed and it went well over the top of these gates here. You can see sort of some of the debris in the top there and it got up nearly to the top of the crush uh, inside the cattle yards. Walked in here, um, the flooding was already up to my knees out in the yard out here. Dropped into here and it was about up to my waist and I walked over thinking I'd save my water blaster which was sitting up against the um, here picked it up, put it up on the shelf we made here and the water height came through and it uh, went over the top of it again. You can see the high tide line over on the on the wall over here. So I'm standing up and the catwalk would have been at my chest height right through this facility here. There's a bit of debris up here, obviously come right through. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's phenomenal to think of the amount of water that's coming down that rivers, where the rivers join and comes down through here to, um, to push that water up that high through this facility. It's, um, yeah, it's, you know, Cyclone Bowler may have been at my feet, which is Cyclone Bowler is the benchmark for the East Coast. Um, so yeah, we're a good, you know, two metres to the top of there, easy, and it's in, it's above that. The grass silage pit is just in behind that fence over there. Uh, it's a bun with a concrete floor, and on the front of it was um, about four or five tonne of maize covered and tied just to seal the pit off. Well, the floods got in under that silage and the covers picked it up and floated it across all the fences, brought it around and dropped it in the middle of our yard over here. So one of the first jobs when we started cleaning up was to dig through that pile of silage and covers and tyres to be able to gain access back down here to where all our sheds are. It's, yeah, unreal, see it picked up like that. Just tyres all cover complete like you'd made it there. This is our last room to clean of the three. We sort of try to pick a room a day and concentrate on it and aim for a bit of a target because it's a relatively demoralising job. We've sort of got to sift through everything by hand and dig out what you can. Um, the silts are really fine, it's like custard, it sort of sticks to everything and um, you know you grab a shovel full to put it into the wheelbarrow and you tip it off and you're left with a half a wheelbarrow, a uh, half a shovel full of um, mud on your shovel, uh, everything's 
getting picked up, washed, sorted. It either goes on the trailer to the bin if it's buggered, um, or we put it on pallets and dry it, and then we've been shipping it away to another shed for storage until we can work out uh, what we're gonna do, how we're gonna replace everything and put it back in. So, slow process, relatively hard work, just really demoralizing. Look, I'd just like to say a massive shout out and thank you for the support we received thus far and, and for anything else that's coming our way, we're incredibly grateful. Uh, like I say, it's going to be a long journey ahead for us and we really, really appreciate anything uh, that people can, can contribute to this. Thanks in advance for any support that um, comes from around the world. I mean, we, we deal a lot with overseas and um, you know, any, any support is welcome through this um, GoFundMe page. Um, it's going to a great cause. These are um, farming families that have been here for multiple generations and um, you know, this is going to be a massive financial hit for us, it's, there's no two ways about it um, and so any support will be welcome to help these, you know, um, these businesses last beyond this event. I mean it is a one in a hundred year event and, and um, but it will be a major financial hit. There's, there's people in the, in the valley here with no insurance and, and you know that's, that's devastating. Um, so thanks in advance for your support. For those of you out there who, who are willing to support and make donations um, through Tapari to this cause, you know, we're so humble. Um, make a big difference to a lot of farms, a lot of families, communities, and be just be a huge thanks um, from all the community to anyone who makes a donation. It's pretty amazing. Cheers.